Hello everyone, Julio here, and today I'm going to show you how you can use web scraping in order to retrieve data from websites. If you don't really know what web scraping is, I would recommend you like look into it. Um, but basically, as I said, you can extract data from websites, like pretty much any website. There's a few exceptions where you have to do um, a couple of things in order for it to work, but it should work normally for most of them. So the one we're going to scrape is just this website, it just like has some clothing or whatever. And it's going to check for the price on each item. So yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, very first thing you're going to need is to add this to your Maven project, this dependency. Um, I already have a project set up here. Here's my palm. I have, it's called JSoup for, uh, it's called beautiful soup, but that's made in Python and the Java version is called JSoup. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I could be wrong though, but yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna also gonna leave this in the description. I'm gonna leave these two in the description. Uh, this is just the documentation in case you want to look over it. So yeah. Let's go. Hey guys, so I finished recording the video, but I saw that I forgot to show you guys this part, my palm.xml. Basically just add this to your dependencies, JSoup and you should be good from there. So yeah, that's all. All right, sorry, we had a bit of an interruption there. But in my main class, I have this, nothing special. And then, so we can go ahead and get started, saying public revenge. So what I wanna do here is have a map, which, well, I'm gonna type it out and then explain what I'm doing. So strings, string, string, items and then right here new hash map. okay cool so basically how this is going to work is once you click on an item you're going to see that it has like its own link obviously so what i want to save in my hash map is going to be this link as the key and then the price of the item as the value so i'm going to go ahead and do that here so we have that and now we need to scan all the items. So I want to scan the items from this link right here. So I want to scan each one of these items. So the way web scraping works is basically you have to look into the HTML for the website in order to scrape certain types of data. So I'm using Google Chrome. All you do is right click here, inspect. And then you're going to see the HTML over here on the side. So each one of these items has a same pattern like it, they all follow this same pattern where they all have an href pointing to their unique link and also they all have a class of product list item link here so if we inspect this one you're going to see that it has that class this one has the class etc etc they're all going to have it so let's go ahead and grab that class those product list item go, go back into our project we're going to just save that in a comment right there and let's make a method called private void scan items like that. And then we can do, okay, so first off we need like the actual website link. So I'm gonna do this standard final string website equals. And I'm just gonna grab it from here. I want this first, like that. And then all right, so now we're actually gonna get into the JSoup component of this project. So basically what we're gonna do here is document, document. We're gonna need it from org.jsoup. Make sure you import it from the correct, correct uh, project, from the correct dependency. <laughs> that took me a while. Uh, document, then try document equals jsoup.connect. We're gonna do website plus slash web store or dot get and then catch io exception ignore here we're going to say do not scan items so if this fails it's just going to print out could not scan items but it's not going to fail um it's like if you if you don't have an internet connection it's probably not going to work but that's just something we're not going to have to worry about right now so yeah, now let's go ahead and do elements, elements equals document dot 
get elements by class. And we save the class name up here, our list item link right there. And just to see if this works, I'm gonna go ahead and do elements for, we're just gonna print out. Actually, no, 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 we can't do that right now. Um, so now that we have this element, well, let's go ahead and bring that back. So right now we grabbed each element with the class name of product list item link. So that means that we now have all of these, right? So what we need to retrieve now is the href here because we need the unique link. So let's go back into here and then we can do string link equals element dot attributes dot get href. So now we can do a sub link. All right, and we don't need this guy anymore. And if we run him, let's go ahead and do this. As you can see, we are able to retrieve all the links that we need. So now we can go ahead and do rather void, um, I don't know, uh, find price, <laughs> string link. So here we can do find price for the link. So right here we can do document. Again, you gotta import it from the correct project, correct dependency. Uh, document document try document equals JC connect website plus link not get catch IO exception norm return did not find the price for link again that's not something we're really gonna have to worry about but we're adding it just in case so let's go ahead and go into the link for this one. Well, we already had it there, but <laughs> so let's go ahead and inspect this one right here. I'm going to see that the class here is called SQS money native. So we're just going to control copy that guy, go back into here. And from here, it's very, very simple. We can just do element, element equals document, get element by class, no, it's hmm. the, I'm wondering if this is going to work because it's a class. Hmm. Let's see, let's go ahead and print out the text. Let's see if that works. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna work. Um, oh yeah, I think we have to do this. Elements, element, oops, elements. Okay, elements by class, there we go. So now we can do elements by four, set element dot text. So if you run this one, you're gonna see that we have it right there. So. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, the, as you can see from, <laughs> I haven't really been explaining what I'm doing, um, but as you can see right here, it found prices for each of the items that we found, um, each one of these items. So we, we were able to find it, but the thing is we had to use a for loop here. And this loop only really has one single element in it. So what we can do here is just say items that put link then text like that and we can break out of it. Um, actually no, we can just keep it like that. It doesn't really matter. And then we need to make one final method private void uh, print items I guess. Uh, so we do items entry set for entry. So we can do string link plus entry dot get key, string price plus entry get value, and print link plus, oh, I typo here, link, there we go. And then set price plus price. And then up here we call 
print items like that. And that should be it. If we run this guy right here, we're going to see. <laughs> there we go. That, that took a while. Um, actually, I don't want it like that. I want it to be website plus link like that. If we run it again, there we go. So let's go ahead and pick this one. Motions long sleeve, price 58. If we go into here, you're gonna see that it is $58. So that's about it. Um, it's very, very simple. And in case you're wondering, a lot of sneaker bots and like uh, clothing brand bots do this type of stuff. They use JSOUP for finding links and all that kind of stuff. Um, JSOUP is not the only library that you're going to need for doing that type of stuff. I, I might make a tutorial on how all of that works. You also need to do some requests, but that's for another video in case you guys want to see that. So I ran through this a little bit fast, I know. So if there's anything that you guys are confused on, let me know and I'll try to explain it in the comments. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. See ya.